975 976 we've got corbin burns and the brewers at chris flexen and the mariners you see burns here favored minus 141 plus 126 for the home dog mariners the total here in this game sitting at seven and a half juice to the over or nope it's a pick them over under minus 115 both ways corby take it away here mariners brewers any thoughts i kind of had a lean here to the brewers first five i like how burns profiles and flex and doesn't look great so maybe you, you're getting a nice number for a corbin burns start in the run line in the first five i think it's sitting at 110 any thoughts in this game yeah i uh i would tend to agree corbin burns was the second highest strikeout prop headed into the season i think it was garrett cole and then him garrett cole was like 225 strikeouts or something crazy and then corbin burns was like 216 so He's obviously a really good pitcher, and the Seattle offense has been really top-heavy basically all year at this point. I think uh, it's due to clean up, but their 5 through 9 has been pretty rough so far. Uh, they did have a pretty decent game last game, but uh, my my issue is I don't like the Brewers. I've, I've talked about this on the show a few times. Spread talked about it as well. Like I bet Brewers don't make the playoffs. I think their offense is doing more than they should. So then it's just like, do I think Corbin Burns is good enough to basically allow zero or sometimes one? Because I think that the Brewers struggle to get to two a lot uh, and, and this total would agree. So I think if anything, I would probably lean towards a Seattle first five team total under, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's really juiced. So uh, by all means, I, I laid off. I do think Corbin Burns probably limits the amount of runs that happen early in the game, though. Yeah, look, I don't. It's I always have a hard time getting Corbin Burns right. He's one of these guys who you look at everything like, oh my god, he's going to dominate, and then he just struggles against lower competition. Isn't isn't overly consistent at being great in my view. But again, I have flex and base winner rated as it's the fourth worst profile against an opposing lineup today outside of Rich Hill, Lance Lynn, and Hayden Wesineski. So uh, I don't know. I think I lean the Brewers here first five, but I, I'm just not brave enough to bet the Brewers yet. They're a team I never get right. What do you think in this one? Hey, you know, I actually made it a play on, on the chart. I, I, did, I didn't think it was strong enough to put out on the show, but you can can you see the Seattle? I got a Seattle. There it Seattle is. Seattle Tommy B today, guys. Let's Seattle go. Tommy B. Because I, I do want this uh, this this offense to to score some runs today. You know, basically, it comes down to my rating on the Seattle offense is third in baseball, and I, I kind of I think we got I got a little bit of time. I can kind of go down absolutely top top to bottom. If you look at at uh, uh, Julio Rodriguez, thirty five percent better uh, from a base winner runs created standpoint. Ty France, twenty seven percent better. Uh, gosh, help me out with this one, Kyle. You can say this better than mine. You mm. Eugenio. Can you e say Eugenio? Eugenio Suarez. Yes. There we go. Great there we go. That 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 goes along with the with the Rico Suave theme of the show. Um, and he's three percent better than average. Cal Raleigh uh, versus right-handed pitching, thirty-five percent better than average. Now this guy really surprised me, and I'm I'm glad that I'm going down. Teoscar Hernandez, six percent better versus right-handed pitching, but I've got him eighty-five percent better versus left-handed pitching. And you may say, well, base winner, what the hell are you doing with that? He's got the best ISO power, better than Paul Goldschmidt over the last wow. two years. He's 0.375 ISO power, leads baseball, 232 wow. at-bats. And I don't think, like, you talk about giving out prizes on this show. I don't, if you could have told me that, anybody in the chat room, you guys, I'd give you a prize. Yeah. Anyway, so that you, you look at that, and, and Corby mentioned they are top heavy on the lineup. That, that he's right about that. Because if you if you look about if you look at like a JP Crawford guy, although that guy's been been hitting better, he's a he's like a 68. Listella's at a hundred. Uh, Kellenick's been been turning it on though. Like he, I would I would consider him like not great, but he's at a 114. He's really had a good start versus right-handed pitching this year. So for all those reasons, I'm gonna play I'm gonna play the uh, the team total over. I, uh, it's funny that you brought up Eugenio Suarez. I, I, I know I may or may not know a guy who may or may not have named his fantasy football team Thick Girthy Eugenio. So I'll let you guess on what he nicknamed, on what he nicknamed Eugenio there. But that was the name of the team. It's really the Eugenio Suarez has an inside meaning that I really can't explain on the show. It's wildly inappropriate, but it's damn funny. That all coming from you, that would that would make sense, Kyle. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. I mean, I mean and that's, you made that, a, that's what I love about you. It's it's, yeah, it's like the, the weirdness, the inappropriateness. That's fun. That's what makes this makes the show tick, in my opinion. You gotta Unless try to mask it a little bit. 
your picks are pretty good too. They're all right. Got I mean, hopefully they are. Knock on wood. Knock on wood right here. Let's hope. Let's hope. Uh, uh, we hit today. It's an interesting one, though. I think if I was betting, I didn't put anything official on it, but I think I would lead Brewers run line in the first five. You didn't at minus 110 just because of the pitching advantage there. But again, it's scary because Burns has a tendency to blow up on occasion. And you're right. That Mariners lineup is very, very the good. The Oscar Hernandez thing just, just it's scored. crazy. Yeah, I, I, I would not. I would up against second. left-handed pitching. He's on my fantasy team. And I could be like, come on. You know, when he gets up to bat, I'd be, come on, T. Oscar the Grouch. I really want to yeah. say that. When he's yeah. on my fantasy team. Come on, Tiasco. That. That's great. Yeah, that's perfect. That's actually uh, perfect. Or you're going to Tay Oscars. I don't know. And then maybe you do a Will Corby, Smith, they, Chris Rock Corby, thing in there. Corby, or something. Did, they, did they have, did they still have Sesame Street when you grew up? No. <laughs> you don't know. Did Oscar, you know what's... Oh my gosh. You don't know who Snuffle Up, I guess, is? I don't. Oh, Big or Bird? Like, or like the weird I... pedo guy who's playing with all the kids in the corner. I know, <laughs> you know, I, know like, I know the uh, I know the cookie monster. Yeah, yeah, you never know about that guy, huh, Kyle? So it's always always good. comes back to that. Good good job, and, buddy. And this weird striped shirt. Just I don't know if I want that guy hanging out with my kids on Sesame Street. You know what I mean? Like it's weird enough that we have adults in uniform over here. Okay, like we have a full grown adult dressed as Oscar the Grouch. That's terrifying enough around your kids. But now we got the weird guy with the bald with the bald spot and the striped shirt and the glasses. Uh, know about that i think you're going to tell me how to get out of sesame street right there like you know call for help tell an adult and don't accept any candy out of a van that that would be my Ooh, suggestion wow on sesame street sorry sesame street and but Kyle uh, could bring bring innuendos back from sesame street reference god put that on your resume kyle you just Damn. gotta work with it you just gotta work with it and uh corby brings up a good point in the chat box the braves which have been red hot six in a row that lineup is just mashing except they strike out a ton which we talked about that they just always done that Getting Max Freed back today, uh, that's good for the Braves. So nothing official from all of us on here today, but I would lean, just for sh the show's sake, Brewers, first five run line, minus 110, but again, just a lean for yeah. me. There. Any yeah, go ahead, anything? Yeah, anything? no, no, I put that on the chart. Um, I've got it minus 193. I, I don't, like, the, the one thing that kind of I was hemming and hawing about whether to put it out on the on the base winner chart today was Ryan Weathers. I just, like, like the yeah. amount of data that I have on him. I don't have a pitching plus number on him, but yeah. like, and, and my love of Carl Weathers in, in, in Rocky, mm -hmm. in the Rocky movies. So that, that was yeah. really kind of weighing on my mind before I, I did my handicap, but he, the number says Braves minus 193 value current odds are minus 150. So for look, me, you just don't, you, you just don't want to pitch lefties against the Braves. The Braves should absolutely smash Weathers today in my view. Now, again, I might've jinxed them. And I love in the chat box how he astutely points out that poor Corby is cringing with three generations of Boomer. Like, I don't know how I got this old. Like, this has happened, you know? Hey, no, I'm not Boomer. I'm 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 lower than that. I, there's a there's a name for the, the Generation X. I think is where I'm. Yeah, at. I think I think I'm on the cusp of Gen X, Gen X, and millennial. I'm 41, but I think they still count me as a millennial or close to it. I might be considered a millennial. I don't know. Nice and young. I think the, I think the innuendos transfer to any age, though. Speaking, speaking <laughs> yeah, as, as supposed to, to. three year old, so damn, they're supposed to. Uh, so nothing official, but again, lean to the Brewers on the run line in that first five. Let's head. To